What's up everyone, my name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we're back on Pokemon Radical Red and today's challenge will be can be Pokemon Radical Red 4.0 Hardcore Mode. Yes, we're doing Hardcore Mode and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just that's the entire challenge. If you guys do not know what Hardcore Mode is in Radical Red, it is the worst game mode in all of Pokemon ROM hack. So it's the most restrictive game mode that actually gives so much advantage to the NPCs, give them the best AIs, give them the best moves, abilities, moves, and items that's not available to you to post game or even at all. Some of the Pokemon you can never get and they have it, <laughs> which is insane to have. And not only that, you're really restrictive so you're not allowed to use certain moves, like no setup moves at all are allowed. You can't use bag items and nothing like that. This is the most demonic mode ever and we're gonna try to beat it. So of course, it's gonna be the hardest mode in all Radical Red and to make it a little more Fun. Each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. So thanks so much for leaving a nickname in my previous challenge video. If you guys want to be nicknamed after your future Pokemon, just drop in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And while it's down there, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much for the Radical Red support. We actually haven't had a lot of support in Radical Red until the new update, of course. You know, the popularity of Radical Red just bounces up. Uh, but it's gonna be a little difficult. So to begin off, uh, I actually completed the run. So that's a little spoiler, but it took me eight hours to do so i did it in sections obviously but eight hours as you can see obviously review the hardcore mode also give you guys some tips maybe some notes in the future if you guys want to attempt this for yourselves uh but yeah so to start off you can choose any starter i actually prefer getting a froki because i obviously know greninja is very broken especially if we get its other abilities besides torrent now that's my first pokemon but uh, i'm also gonna catch a bunch of bone you want to set up your team really nicely in the beginning one thing radical red does really well is introduce a lot of routes and a lot of pokemon really early so probably will never be the same if you've played through the game twice so you could just catch a bunch of pokemon just to have on your team i i figured this would be a decent team luxio fanpy my frog deer obviously my applin and a galarian zigzagoo and i also um, catch myself a toad school which can be very nice and also in this mode there's minimum grinding which means you have perfect ivs and also you can change your nature whenever you want you also get infinite rare candy so think about that what kind of game mode gives you all these resources it must be a very very demonic game mode because if they give you all these resources there's got to be a catch to it and the catch is every single battle is a pain it's a war so in every single route there is going to be some kind of boss trainer and they're the most difficult trainers in the world as you can see the first boss trainer is this person over here that actually gives you access to infinite repels as well and then from there there's another boss trainer in the same route so there's two boss trainers there is a bug boss trainer and we barely beat both of them but we're able to get along into Peter city with just barely any hp left from there we can move into Peter city and then use a game shark code to obviously hatch my eggs faster and uh, lucky enough we found ourselves a purple which is going to be an Ultra Beast. We're going to actually keep that in our PCs for later. We catch a bunch of Pokemon. You'll see later on. But from there, we're going to face off against Faulkner, which isn't too difficult. We're actually able to just clear through Faulkner. It takes a little bit because we had to face off against this Galarian Farfetch. And my Frog there is very stubborn and does not want to leave the fight until we beat down the Farfetch. And from there, we're able to beat down a Watchroll, which is going to be... I don't know if it's a good Pokemon or not. But we beat down a Watchroll and Yanma with my Galarian Lanoon. And from there, once we beat Faulkner, we have access into the first gym in the game. We're going to face off against Brock, the first gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Frog there, And I'm going to immediately switch into my Galarian Lanoon. Because he's going to switch into his Leap. And I'm able to get a bunch of Night Slash. Eventually, end up knocking him out with a Night Slash. Which is amazing for us. Also knocks out the Vroom. It's toxic, but that's fine with us because we also knock out the Vroom and do a lot of damage against the Lunatone, which is great for us. As from there, we can switch into my Frog Deer and then actually double into my Applin because he does have a Cacnea in the back. And I'm able to Dragon Breath, hoping for a status. He does not as he gets a bunch of power punches, which is kind of unfortunate. But I do have a Luxio with Intimidate and unfortunately, I'm still unable to beat him. So I'm going to switch out into my Fampy to Ice Shard and knock out the Cacnea. Uh, Fampy is a pretty good Pokemon. I actually use Fampy and Dolphin a lot in this playthrough, surprisingly. Uh, we're able to beat down the Arcan and also beat down the Lunatone. And then his final Pokemon will be his starter Pokemon, is Hippopotas. I can Ice Shard, eventually sack my Fampy, and switch out to my Frogadier to Water Post and knock him out. Brock doesn't seem like that bad of a battle, so you know what? We'll, we'll just keep moving on. From there, we face off against this other boss trainer with a Flying Pikachu, which, you know, I think you're able to find, but obviously not this early in the game. Uh, she cooked us. She destroyed us so badly, I had to rework my team <laughs> to find a better Pokemon. 
Uh, from there, we also want to make sure we go through any uh, raid dens because there could be really good Pokemon in every single raid den. You also get the hidden ability of the Pokemon you're facing. And also, once you beat the raid dens, you get a bunch of items that they drop. So it could be citrus berries, which are very valuable in the beginning parts of the game. So make sure to get all the raid dens you can. From there, we can move out into Mount Moon where we're able to clear through this level battle fight, which normally is a little difficult. Uh, but we're able to clear through and we'll first try. Also beat down Archer with our last Pokemon once again. That'd be staying strong. And then from there, we're going to actually catch ourselves a Riolu and then groom it. Sound a little weird, but we're, <laughs> we're also going to evolve the Riolu into Lucario. Uh, which is going to be probably a cornerstone of my team for the rest of the game. I'm not going to lie. We're also going to go into this Egg Merchant and get our next Pokemon. Which is going to be a Gimme Goal. Which evolves into Goldingo, which is a newer Pokemon, which is very strong. You'll see why later on. We also catch ourselves a Char Cadet. Now there's some Pokemon as you see that my Gyarados is a nickname. I actually use a bunch of Pokemon that I don't plan a nickname. I assume I was going to use them a lot so I didn't nickname them. I didn't waste one of you guys' nicknames. But uh, from there we're going to face off against the second gym leader in the game. We're going to face off against Misty next. Misty is the water type gym leader in the game. And we're going to start the battle off against her using my Appleton. Appleton actually forces uh, the Politoed to switch into her Toxicroak. Which I hit with an Apple Acid. And she has infinite rain on by the way. They have infinite weather. If they actually activate weather, it's just infinite. Super annoying. But yeah, that played through the rules. Also, if they set up terrain infinite as well i switch out to my luxio which does get intimidated off and get a paralyzed uh against the toxic croak and gets to chip it down i can switch out into my paw knot which is able to dig and knock out the toxic croak nuzzle against the mantine get it paralyzed and then nuzzle it down lucky enough for us the npcs don't get to use items or this would have been impossible so we have to go into my appleton and knock them out with an apple acid eventually and then her next pokemon will be a ludicolo which i'm able to go for dragon breath and paralyze again i got every single type of paralyze possible i'm able to apple acid as it's gonna knock me down but i can switch out into my lucario next lucario has aura sphere which i use and then i don't do enough damage and then mock punch has to knock him out but i'm scald so from there i just sack my lucario against the starmie and then i'm gonna switch out into my toad school toad school is gonna go for stun spore of course because you know paralyze is broken i take an aurora beam and i'm hoping mega drain will gain my hp and it crits and knocks out the starmie gets my hp all the way up as well from there we're gonna have to stun spore down the clock sire go out to my galarian lanoon and just knock it down slowly with returns eventually i'm gonna die to toxic but she's also at low hp which allows my toad school to come out and mega drain and knock him out her final bone will be a polytoad which i three shot and knock out and we actually cleared through misty well out too much trouble which Normally, she gives us a lot of pain. I'm not going to lie. So, I'm glad I beat down Misty. Uh, I choke against this other boss trainer at the end of Route 4 a lot of times. Lucky enough, we beat him this time. And then, finally, our final Egg Merchant we use. We're just going to give us a Snivy, which I was like, oh, wait. This could be good. But, unfortunately, Contrary is banned in Hardcore mode. You can't get Contrary. They just replaced it with a different ability. I got myself a Hisu and Sneasel, which is kind of cool. We'll keep that on our team for later. And from there, we're going to face off against Lieutenant Surge next. Lieutenant Surge is going to be the electric gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Paul Knot. We're going to arm thrust and knock out his Rotom. And from there, he's going to switch out to his Raichu, which I low sweep. And then I switch out to my Serial Ledge for some reason. I, I do have a Dark type in the back, but I guess I just wasn't confident with it. Shadow Sneak will knock out the Raichu. And then he's going to switch out to his Electrode, which will knock me out, obviously. But I switch out into my Lucario, which will do some chip damage against the Electrode. But against the Paul Knot, it's going to get knocked out. So I switch out into my own Paul Knot. And Paul Knot is going to beat his Paul Knot. So <laughs> from there, he's going to switch out to his Mega Ampharos, which I do a lot of damage with Arm Thrust. I obviously go down in the following turn. So I switch out into my Toad's Cruel, which will much shot into his Hitmonlee. And then I Stun Spore it. And then Mega Drain. Unfortunately, I don't take a close combat, which is tough. But I'm going to switch out into my Apple Ton to Apple Acid, knock out the Hitmonlee. His next bone will be his Electrode, which just knocks himself out, which is kind of funny. So from there, I had to switch out into my Obstagoon, which is able to outspeed the Mega Ampharos and knock him out in two shots. Dodge and attack, W, and then that will be his last Pokemon. I thought he has a Manectric. I guess he doesn't because he has an Ampharos, but we beat down Lieutenant Surge. Now from there, we're going to move out into the Rock Tunnel, and this is the final fight before we can head into Lavender Town. And I choked. I choked so bad. I can't believe I choked. I could have beat them. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh my god, I'm the worst player. So I choked. I had to go through Rock Tunnel once again. <laughs> From there, we're going to head into Celadon City and face off against Erica at least. Erica's team is not that crazy. I'm going to start the battle off against her using my Paul Nut. And I'm able to arm thrust into her Craterly to two-shot it. From there, she switched it into a Kartana, which I know I can live a hit because this thing's not that strong at the moment. 
Uh, I could fire punch and knock out the Kartana. Her next Pokemon will be a Slowbro, which is going to be Galarian Slowbro, I think. So I'm able to Thunder Punch, do nice chip damage to it. Switch out into my Stereo Lich to knock out the Slowbro. And their next Pokemon will be a Halucha. I want to Will-O-Wisp it and then go into Shadow Claw mode and almost knocks him out, basically. From there, switch out into my Luxray, which... Terrible idea. I switch out into my Donphan after, and then I should have knock out the Halucha, and also should have knock out the Toxicity. I don't, I don't know how I don't survive a Boom Burst, but from there I switch out to my Obstagoon, which would knock out the Toxicity, and then her final poem will be a Mega Sceptile, which knocks out my Obstagoon, but I do have Sentient or Satitan. I, I actually don't know what this Pokemon's called. It's actually not that strong, but it's really strong against Sceptile and anything that's four times weak to Ice. It's very strong against them, so we're able to beat down a Mega Sceptile. From there, we can move on to the next portion of the game, which is going to be Team Rocket's Hideout. Uh, we're also able to get ourselves the Ability Capsule, and then switch our Greninja, our starter Pokemon's ability, into Battle Bond. Yeah, we switched it into Battle Bond. <laughs> just, I thought it was a hidden ability. No, it's just straight up the second ability I can get. So, we're going to have Battle Bond and beat the Giovanni pretty easily. So, yeah, probably not the best idea to give me Battle Bond this early in the game. From there, we're just going to move on and face off against Lavender Tower. And then get ourselves the Poke Flute. And also face off against Morty to get ourselves the Shadow Ball TM. And then also face off against Chuck. We're going to have Chuck ready so we get a Focus Sash when we want. And then we're going to move on into Silph Cove where we're able to barely beat our rival. And then get ourselves healed up and face off against Ariana and Archer. Which Battle Bond Greninja destroys, you know, with also Mega Sceptile. Which is ironic because in the anime, they actually fought against each other. So from there, we're going to face off against Giovanni once again at Silph Cove. We're able to beat him down pretty easily. Toad's Cruel is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. This thing's so tanky and it's so speedy. I don't know how it works, but it's just working so well. It's such a nice Pokemon to have. Uh, we're able to beat down Giovanni, and now we're going to head into one of the hardest gym fights ever. This is going to be a double battle fight against Sabrina in Misty Terrain with infinite Trick Room. Infinite Trick Room. Our Pokemon will be guaranteed faster than me. Unless I actually use a uh, priority move, so at least that works. And unfortunately, I lose to Sabrina a lot of times. Her Pokemon just instantly missed the explosion against me. I am trying to get that because that's actually like a win. You can't get Protect. Protect is banned, but certain Pokemon have moves that are similar to Protect. That actually works out really well. So I use Obstagoon at first, which has Obstruct, but actually a better Pokemon for this is going to be H Slash. So I'm going to start the battle off against uh, Sabrina using my Greninja and also my H Slash. Now I'm going to go for a King Shield immediately, so I assume it's going to go for Misty Explosion. Water Shuriken should knock out the camera, which it actually does. And I get a Battle Bond and also have a Roselli Berry. I'm able to survive a Moonblast in Misty Terrain against Tapu Fini. It's going to allow us to go for an Iron Head against the Magearna and Water Shuriken. Unfortunately, my Greninja is going to go down, but Magearna is still alive. I switch out into my Goldango. It's able to go for a signature move, make it rain. I go for a King Shield and I'm able to knock out the Magearna. Her next Pokemon will be an Iron Hands, which is the strongest Pokemon. I don't know how to deal with this thing, but it's so strong. From there, I'm going to switch out my H Slash into my Lapras in the back. Unfortunately, my Goldango goes down to that, and I don't heal off the Muddy Water, which is unfortunate. So, <laughs> I even checked. I switch out into my Dawnfan after this. I'm able to bad tantrum into the Iron Hands, and I also try to knock him out with a Hydro Pump. But uh, she goes for a Misty Explosion, which works out. Knocks out everything on my side and her side, so we both have two Pokemon left. And these two Pokemon are really worth it for me, because I have Serilich and also H Slash. Her next two Pokemon will be Jellicent and Glacier which will always go for Swords Dance for the first turn, so we have a free turn to knock out the Jellicent, as we just double Shadow Sneak and knock out the Jellicent on our first turn. Uh, she now is boosted up, which she can one-shot both of us, but surprisingly enough, works out, because I do have Bitter Blade and also a Focus Sash on Serial Ledge. Survive a high horsepower as I'm able to Bitter Blade and knock out the Glacier, as we're able to beat down Sabrina, and I'm super happy as you can see. We're able to beat down Sabrina, and now we go to, as her reward, we go through the dreaded path of the cycling road. So uh, yeah, we're going to skip past this, but uh, it's painful. From there, we head into Future City. We get access to Egg Moves, which we put Mirror Coat on our Toad Scroll. Gonna be useful later. We also face off against our rival Brendan. He is a Tapu Koko, which I, I actually don't know where to find in this game. He also has a Deoxys, which is banned. Can't even get that. Uh, to access the gym in Future City, you have to go back and face off against all the gym leaders, which is super annoying, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I gotta face off against Brock, beat down Misty, 
uh, skip Lieutenant Surge and face off against Erica, and then come back and barely beat Lieutenant Surge with my Greninja. And then from there, we could face out against Koga. Koga is going to be the sixth gym leader in the game. Sarah is going to start the battle a survival side shock against the Tapu Lele. By the way, she, he has infinite Tailwind and infinite Psychic Terrain, which is super annoying. I'm here to Shadow Claw at least and then knock out the Tapu Lele. His next Pokemon will be a Chiyu, which is going to be a new like legendary Pokemon. It's Dark and Fire. I have a Mega Gyarados in the back, so from from beating Misty, we get the Mega Stone for Gyarados, and I wasn't planning on using him, so I didn't have a nickname, but I'm able to knock out a Chiyu using my Mega Gyarados. From there, he's going to switch out to his Hoopa, Unbound, and I'm like, I got a sack of Gyarados. Switch out into my Tinkaton, which I'm glad I could use Tinkaton at least. I'm able to play rough and knock out the Hoopa. From there, he's going to switch out to his Toxicity, which I switched out. School great pivot into my Toast Curl to Miracle and knock out the Toxicity. And from there, he's going to switch up to his Crocodile. Let my poor Toad School go down, but I have a Hitmonchan in the back with Focus Sash. I'm going to live in Earthquake because of that. Close combat with Hitmonchan to knock him out. And then his next poem will be a Needle King, which I do have a Baxcalibur in the back. With Icicle Spear, as I'm able to survive an Earth Power and knock him out with Icicle Spears. As we're able to beat down Koga, and also we can come back and get ourselves the Life Orb. We're actually going to go Item Hunting as we face up against Price next. Get ourselves the Choice Scarf. And then from there, face off against Jasmine, get ourselves the choice ban, which I'm not too sure if I use too often, but I do face off against Jasmine. From there, we also get ourselves the Mega Lucarioite, which is going to be very useful. We face off against Misty next, and Misty isn't too difficult as we're able to beat her down. From there, we're going to face off against Blaine next, and Blaine, Blaine actually has Desolate Land, Infinite Desolate Land, which means I can't use a single water move against him so he's a fire type gym leader i don't know how i don't know how i'm gonna do this but a lot of times i had to reset and check if any pokemon is actually working i had to reset a lot of times switch up the items but finally we had a run that's working so we start the battle off against him using my mian shell against the sandy shock i think i have expert belt or choice card but against the sandy shock i have reckless high jump kick one shots it beautiful beautiful poetry his next poem will be his venusaur which i switch out to my sarah ledge i'm able to bitter blade and then shadow stick to knock him out super easy his next poem will be a great tusk which actually is considered one of the strongest pokemon in the game at the moment but i switch out into my toast curl and uh basically check it giga drain basically knocks him out nope he knocks me out i take it back <laughs> i talk too much i switch out to my sarah ledge to crit him with shadow stick to knock him out and his next poem will be a walking wake he's getting draco barrage me but i get a will-o-wisp off against him which is kind of funny i'm not too sure how sarah ledge is tanking hits but i know it's worth it i switch out to my snorlax in the back and um this is the only time you ever see Snorlax. I caught Snorlax for the leftovers. I've never used leftovers a single time in this entire run. However, I used the Snorlax that I wasn't thinking I was going to use. As I'm able to knock out the Walking Wake with my Snorlax. And then Blaine's Hover comes out. And it's one of the most annoying Pokemon possible. It knocks out my Snorlax. Go out to my Dawn Fan. Dawn Fan's able to go for a head smash. Which will obviously kill like 40 Ho's. But unfortunately, once you kill the ho it revives. It has Phoenix Revival. It revives at half HP. I go out to my Lucario. Lucky enough, this Mega Lucario is strong enough to knock out the ho with Rock Tomb. And from there, he's going to switch up to his Charizard, which will be Charizard X. Which, thinking back, I should have gone for a Rock Tomb to lower his speed and then Drain Punch him. But, you know, it works out. I go out to my Man Shell to fake him out and then switch out into my Sayer Ledge. And then it would knock out Blaine as we're able to beat down Blaine. Get ourselves a 7th Gym match in the game and also get ourselves the Choice Specs from him by showing a Pokemon. And from there, we're also going to move out and face off against Archer and Ariana in Cerulean Cave. Really hard. I couldn't figure out a single Pokemon to help me in this situation. First five attempts was not working out. So what Pokemon can I get to help me? I decided to go all the way back in time and revive ourselves an Aerodactyl, which is going to be insane. It actually took care. Aerodactyl and Greninja took care of Archer by themselves, which is insane, no? This is a crazy duo. As we're ready to beat down Archer and then... Ariana, I'm glad they actually gave some mercy. Ariana, we have the beat down with just our Sarah Ledge. And uh, yeah, from there, we face off against the, one of the harder fights. I normally have a lot of trouble against Giovanni, let alone Hardcore Giovanni, which has more broken Pokemon. Easily beat him on my second or third attempt. I was going crazy. I was like, what? How is this possible? Aerodactyl was a crazy check. And also, my Sarah Ledge gets a crazy crit and knocks out Mega Mewtwo Y. And then from there... Dialga just clutches up and knocks out both of the remaining Pokemon as we're able to beat down Giovanni super easily, you know, piece of cake. From there, we're going to face off against the final gym leader in the game. We're going to face off against Claire. 
player is going to be the H gym layer and we're starting to battle off against her using my Lucario. Mega Lucario is able to get a meter mash into the shuckle and get an attack boost, which is very good, very broken. In this game mode, it's hard to get stat boost because they ban a lot of boosting moves. 10% meter mash attack boost actually worth it as I get a second one facing off against the Eternatus and maybe get a bullet punch and knock out the Eternatus. So two Pokemon down. Her next one will be a Roaring Moon and I almost one shot it with bullet punch. If imagine if I had mock punch, it would have been crazy. I go out to my Aerodactyl and forgot I Mega Evolved with my other Pokemon, so I have to go for Iron Heads against the Magirna, as it's going to keep going for Shift Gears, eventually going to knock me out. No, it doesn't. It knocks me out as it's at 1 HP. So I go out to my Serialist to knock him out, and then Duraludon is going to knock me out. I go out to my Mian Shell, which will high jump kick into the Duraludon and knock him out. From there, I'm able to also knock out the Roaring Moon. And then from there, her final Pokemon will be uh, Ultra Necrozma, which will knock out my poor Mian Shell. But I do have Toad's Crew in the back with Mirror Coat as I'm able to knock out the Ultra Necrozma. From there, I'm going to move out and actually go back into Surian Cave and actually face off against this trainer. Once you beat this trainer, randomly, I didn't know this would happen. You get yourself a little Cub Chew, which you can evolve into an Urshifu, which we're obviously going to take. And from there, we're going to catch a bunch of Legendaries. You know, I never actually used Legendaries ever in these Radical Red Hardcore modes or Radical Red in general. So I wanted to try them out since the only time I ever get to use them. And uh, a lot of them are terrible. I don't like them at all, especially in Hardcore mode. They're not really good. A lot of the appeal of them with their high stats is actually washed away because they have terrible typing or terrible movesets or just terrible survivability that they're actually not that good of a Pokemon. So I'm actually going to use some Legendaries, but not a lot of them. Surprisingly, my entire team won't be Legendary, as we're going to catch the final Roaming Legendary, which is going to be Shin Pao. I actually really enjoy it. I couldn't get him to spawn, but eventually we do. I love Roaming Legendaries for some reason. As a kid, I hate them. As I grow up, I kind of like them a little more. From there, we're going to face off against our rival in Route 22, and this is where we're trying out all the Legendary Pokemon. Like, I'm really realizing that none of, my, none of them are really my favorite Pokemon at all. I'm like, wow, these are these are really, these are way better in comp. But from there, eventually we get a win against a rival, just barely. And then from there, we can face off against Brendan. And Brendan's fight is a little easier. It's always a little easier against Brendan. As you can see, I already switched up a lot of my Pokemon to be not legendary. So, uh, yeah, you can see where this is going. Eventually, I do black out on Victory Road because some of the Pokemon were terrible. But eventually, we go through Victory Road and clear through it pretty easily. And uh, we also stayed for a little bit there's a reason why we stay now firstly we want to catch ourselves a jirachi because this is kind of a cool pokemon also has serene grace iron head probably could be broken we're also going to go into lorelei's chamber and i'm not going to start the obviously our leaf four challenge we want to see which team she has does she have her ice team or water team she has her ice team which is you know what actually better for us so i decided to ditch a bunch of my pokemon and then go back into victory road in this raid then there's genesect we actually don't want genesect we caught ourselves with Genesect and decided it's not that great of a Pokemon. We wanted to start farming Genesect because it's the only Pokemon in the game with a Raid Den that has 1% chance of getting a Choice Scarf. So we're going to actually grind this out. Eventually, we're going to get ourselves a Choice Scarf. And so we have two Choice Scarves. I could have kept going for a third one, but I think two is enough. Once we have a second Choice Scarf, we're going to obviously give that to our Shifu and one to our Jirachi. And then my final team will look like this, Jirachi... Toastcrow or Shifu Latios, which is going to be interesting, and Mega Lucario, which I could actually switch the Mega Stone between Latios and Lucario whenever I want. And then the final Pokemon would be Godango, which you might think is a random choice, but I think it's going to be very strong. As we're going to face off against the first Elite Four member in the game against Lorelai using my Shifu and Jirachi. Jirachi goes for I shifted into the first slot, Iron Head, and actually outspeed Slush Rush Glaceon at which is crazy no uh, i'm able to actually outspeed a glacier and it does barely any damage against me i'm also able to surging strike which always crits against any any time it hits so i'm able to basically knock out the tapu fini and also knock out the glacier in the same turn her next bone will be a landorus which is going to u-turn into a shin pao and take a surging strike which does a lot of damage to her as well uh, eventually, she can switch out into her landers once again, and I switch out to my Mega Lucario, which I'm able to Iron Head into the Shin Pao, flinch it, and Ice Punch into the landers, and one shot it with my Mega Lucario. So this team is going crazy. From there, I'm able to Iron Head into the Shin Pao and knock them out. I really wish I actually Iron Head into the Bomb Snow and then go for a Mock Punch or something against the Shin Pao, but you know what? It works out as I'm able to Iron Head into the Bomb Snow and knock them out. Double attack into them. As her final Pokemon will be a Kiram White, which I do have three Pokemon in the back. I'm going to use my Toad Scroll, which always has the Focus Sash on. 
and also my Godango to make it rain. And eventually, I'm able to make it rain and knock out the Bomb Snow and keep the Kyurem at 1 HP. And from there, I'm able to knock out the Kyurem with make it rain as we're able to beat down Lorelei. From there, we're going to move on to the next Elite Four member where we're going to face off against Bruno. Bruno's going to be the fighting type Elite Four member and we're going to start the battle off against him using my Ashifu. Now, Ashifu is able to surging strike and knock out the Infernoid before it sets up Stealth Rocks, which is very broken. So, it's Choice Scarf or Shifu actually is crazy. From there, he's going to switch out into Zerora, which is going to be an electric type Pokemon. I don't think it's electric fighting, but it's electric. So, I switch out into my Latios. No, I switch out into my Toad Scroll. Toad Scroll is able to Earth Power twice into him. He's going to break my Focus Sash. But lucky enough, I'm able to beat down a Zerora. His next opponent will be his Iron Valiant, which I was kind of hoping to use my Toad Scroll against. But unfortunately, he's going to knock me out. I switch out to my Jirachi, which will go for an Iron Head, but he's going to immediately switch out to his Necrozma. So I'm like, oh, this thing's a little scary. I switch out into my Lucario, which can't do anything as it's going to Earthquake and knock me out. I go out to my Godango, which will not do any damage at all. And I'm like, oh, this might be a losing battle. I go out to Urshifu, though. Urshifu outspeeds and then two shots it with Surging Strike. And it keeps going for Dragon Dances, even though it's in the back foot. I made a Surging Strike it and knock him out. From there, he's going to switch out to the Zacian. And I'm like, I should switch out, but I'm not. So I go for Surging Strike, almost knock out the Zacian. And I could actually go for it again. I'm not too sure why I didn't, but... uh. I just can go for a close combat and wild charge to knock out my Latios as I'm able to Iron Head and knock out the Zacian. And then I'm going to switch out into my Shifu against his Mega Lucario, which works out for me as I outspeed him, Surging Strike to get him down to low HP. And then switch out to my Jirachi, which will Iron Head into him and knock him out. And his final poem will be an Iron Valiant, which is part Fairy type, as I'm able to knock him out and knock out Bruno pretty easily. Now from there, we're going to move out and face off against Agatha next. Agatha actually surprisingly is pretty difficult as she knocks me out multiple times. So we have to rearrange our team a little bit, but we're always going to start the battle the same way. We're going to start the battle off against Agatha using my Ashifu. Now Ashifu denies rocks by knocking out the Crocodile with Surging Strike. Now our next poem after that will be a Calyrex, which I'm going to go out into my Godango just to sack it, unfortunately. But from there, I switch out into my Toad Scroll. I know from experience it's going to switch out into Zyvelto on Hue, Spore it. To make it go to sleep switch out into my lucario after that go for a meter mash against him and then it works out as it wakes up from its nap with one turn which is annoying but i go for a meter mash to knock out the uvelto and then from there her next poem will be a victini which i decided to go out for a bullet punch i was expecting it to kill me now i just gave it a free z celebrate i go out to my toad scroll and it forces out the victini because i have a focus ash and it works out really well i realize i don't have too many options so i'm gonna stay in and just mirror code into the calyrex which works out really well for us as we're able to beat down the Calyrex and actually survive with my Toad Scroll, funny enough. But unfortunately, Fluttermings can come out and knock on my Toad Scroll, but it's done a lot of work for us. As I go out to my Jirachi and I'm getting Iron Head, I catch the Victini, so I switch out into my Latios, and Latios is able to just chip down the Victini, recover when I want, and actually catch the Mega Mewtwo uh, with my Dragon Pulse, which is funny enough because that allows us to go for a Psychic and knock him out. I have so do on this Latios, so that's why it's super broken. And then from there, Agatha's can switch out into her Fluttermane, which will knock out my Latios, but I switch out into my Jirachi. I'm able to Iron Head and knock out the Fluttermane and also the Victini pretty easily. That's ready to beat down Agatha, and now there's only two members left. Now, the second to the last member we're gonna face off against is gonna be Lance. Lance is gonna start the battle off against us using a Glamora, which means I can't deny the Toxic Spikes, so I'm actually not gonna use my Urshifu. I start with my Mega Lucario. And I actually kind of hoped I go for a meter mash and get an attack boost. Apparently, I can't even land one. So I decided to go until I am a, I'm a restart until I land a meter mash. And I do land one and I actually get an attack boost from it. It does set up stealth rocks and toxic spikes, which is kind of annoying. But from there, I'm allowed to go for another meter mash, hoping for another attack boost. He actually switches out to his Arceus Fairy and gets caught with a meter mash. It kills him and I get a second attack boost. I'm like, wow. That is broken. From there, I outspeed the Dragonite. I ice punch him through multi scale, kills him with a crit, I think, and knocks out the Dragonite. From there, I'm just gonna take my win and knock out the Glamora with Bullet Punch. His next bone will be a Melmetal, which I go for Drain Punch against him and one shot him as well. Mega Lucario is a beast. This thing's broken. From there, I go for Drain Punch against Dialga, but it doesn't work. He goes for Rest next, which works out for me as I'm able to knock him out using my Godango. His next and final Pokemon will be his Mega Rayquaza, which Sacrifice my go dangle, which is fine. I go out to my Jirachi, Iron Head to knock him down. Basically beat him down. I take an Earthquake as well. Jirachi's really <laughs> Jirachi's really broken. Uh, from there, I'm gonna switch out into my Mega Lucario to Bullet Punch and knock out the Mega Ray. Which normally he's actually a difficult fight. That was not difficult at all. I actually found the cheese. Now from there, I'm gonna face off against Blue, the final battle in the game, the champion of the game. 
and unfortunately I lose a few times. He has some really broken Pokemon. Uh, in this fight, supposedly you can't status him or lower his attack or lower his stats at all, but I'm pretty sure I status him like multiple times. But anyways, we're gonna start the battle off against Blue using my Latios against his Kyogre. I actually didn't have any other options. I actually go for a Psychic against his Kyogre. He switches out to his Arceus and he gets a special defense drop. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna switch out to my Urshifu. Urshifu is able to go for Surging Strikes and actually chipping down, almost knocks him out. But I take, I tank an Earthquake. That was the Swords Dance tank too. So I'm like, okay, that works for me. He goes out to his Walking Wig next, which I'm like, I don't really have a play here. I'm gonna switch out into my Latios to sack it, unfortunately. But then I'm gonna switch out into my Jirachi and I'm like, hopefully Iron Head flinching. I get it one, two, three. Oh my God, four flinches. And then he's forced to switch out to his Eternatus. And then I'm like, you know what? Bang on it. You know what? Keep going. I have a bunch more. One more flinch against him. He gets annoyed. He switched out to his Primal Kyogre. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm pushing it a little bit. I switched out to my Toes just to sack it. But it works out for me as it misses the Origin Post. And then he's going to switch out to his Eternatus. Which I go for Miracle. And it works out for me as I'm able to just take a Draco Barrage. Almost knocks him out with a Miracle. But unfortunately, he has so much HP, he survives. I switch out to my Mega Lucario after that. And I'm able to Bullet Punch and knock him out. The next moment will be his Primal Kyogre. Which I'm able to Drain Punch. Don't take an Orange Pose, obviously. I get knocked out. But I switch out into my Urshifu. Which will Surge and Strike in the rain. Two shot will knock out the Kyogre. His next opponent will be a Xerneas. Which I go for Surge and Strike. Get him down to low HP. And then he goes for a Geomancy. Which is fine. I switch out to my Godango just to sack it. And I switch out into my Urshifu to Aqua Jet it. Knock him out. I do have a Choice Scarf with a Priority Move. Which is kind of funny. Uh, from there, I can't switch out into my Jirachi. Or I might just die. So I'm going to just take an Aqua Jet. And I... At this point, I thought I lost the game, but unfortunately, for our rival, I get one, another one, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth Iron Head flinch against his Swamper to knock him out. The most annoying play possible to knock out his Mega Swamper. He had the game won. I also knock out the Walking Wake with the final <laughs> Iron Head, so obviously, I use every single Iron Head possible, and I beat Pokemon Radical Red Hardcore Mode with basically Jirachi flinches. I beat the Hardcore Mode. I just wanted to use Legendaries just for fun. And it was quite fun. I beat the Elite Four in my record time of one hour. I The entire Elite Four. One hour. Which is nuts, no? It felt good. It really felt good to beat the entire game. But that was pretty fun. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you guys can, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. If you guys do attempt Pokemon Radical Red Hardcore Mode, let me know what you guys think of it. If you guys completed it and your final team in the comments down below. But anyways, my name is Ben Alpha, and I hope you guys all have a great day, and I'm out. Peace.